Well, hello to Broadcast. This is episode number three. We've been on a holiday for the last four weeks, a surprise holiday to Mazatlan on the uh, west coast of Mexico. Lovely this time of the year, only around uh, 30 degrees. Perfect autumn temperatures here in Mexico on the west coast. It's in, actually in the same state that I live, but it's still a wrecking six hour tr journey. Anyway, this is a very exciting show. We've got lots to really catch up on. So let's get into today's program and let you know what we're going to be talking about. Um, but first, a big hello to uh, people that are on YouTube. Thank you for um, tuning in. And um, for those people that are listening on the podcast, if you listen to this on YouTube, you are gonna not going to be able to listen to the music due to copyright. So if you want to appreciate the music, I would head over to the podcast which will be in the description of the YouTube um, um, video. Anyway, on today's show, um, we're talking about three games we covered this week, three amazing games, all that I'm going to be backing here. Um, Resurgence, Weather Machine, and The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, the adventure game. All three of them super special in their own way. Resurgence is like a gem that you really need to look at. Weather Machine's a good crunchy one by Vitera from the legendary designer from Portugal, Vidal um, Lacerra. And the big surprise hit of the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Wow, that blew me away with how that campaign has gone. Um, other than that, we are gonna be talking also about the Arcane animation series that's on Netflix. If you've not seen that, Look up, look forward to that part of the show where I will be expressing my thoughts on that and also four films that I watched since I last did broadcast which was June, the recent James Bond, uh, Finch and Red Notice. All four films I highly recommend and I'll let you know my thoughts on them when we get to the latter part of the show where we talk about movies as it's going to be like a mixed format today. All right then, so before we talk about our first Kickstarter of the week, Resurgence, we are going to be playing a song this week. Um, it's going to be all about jazz songs, and I'm going to be covering two bands in particular, Pink Martini and Diana Kroll, who are my two favourite lady singers of jazz, and um, you may not have heard of one or two of them, so hopefully you get a bit of musical education here today. But our first song, this is an absolute beauty, it gives you that South American vibe, and it's called Never Stop Falling in Love with Pink Martini. So please, let's take it away. Oh, that is an amazing song. It just makes me want to dance. Invite my wife up and dance to that song. Amazing song. You might class it as a bit of soul, but I think it's a little bit jazzy for me with all the instruments. But spectacular song there from Pink Martini. Anyway, let's talk about our first Kickstarter, Resurgence. Oh my goodness me. Stan, Stan Kodlinski. Uh, <laughs> this really modern designer now he's become a legend in his own right and he did an amazing design of a kickstarter last year one of my favorites endless winter and he's decided to go indie indie because endless winter is fantasia games they've become a, like a, a little independent games studio but um he's gone even smaller than an independent studio he's got like a really small team like five people um, that are doing a resurgence. It's a engine building work placement game set in Moscow, Russia. Looks really, really cool. You really should check this out because every um, YouTuber that's been playing this game have said how incredible the game is. I, I first got wind of this at Gen Con's coverage. Um, Man vs. Meeple actually sat down with Stan to um, talk about the game and um, since then it's coming along in good way. On my video though I do have some concerns about the board art. I think it could be 
um, done another pass and um, that really would bring it into another level in my opinion and hopefully with the indie team they have got some agility with the design resurgence is such a great value as well it's like 55 dollars and the they should have announced the expansion by now it's running a bit late on the updates but if you check the resurgence kickstarter page you'll probably get the expansion they're throwing in to the bundle at 55 dollars it's really a good bargain and um, if they're not shipping to your country because it's super indie um, try and supply them with names of suppliers in your country and you should be covered there with resurgence it's looking super cool it's a game i want in my collection just because of its engine building uniqueness with loads of bonuses that you're getting with all the cards just looks spectacular if you want to know my full thoughts you've got my full video on my kickstarter channel kickstarter radio 102.4 on youtube links all in the description Phew. now um, we're going to be talking about Weather Machine next by Vidal Vecera. But before we talk about that, let's play another song. And we're going to my favourite jazz artist, um, Fully, which is Diana Kroll. This is Were or When. This was played live in Rio and it's spectacular. It reminds me when I met my wife at the airport in Guadalajara for the first time. And... Um, yeah, so it has some kind of romantic connection for me, but it's a really beautiful song. And if you are married or in a relationship, it can maybe bring back those memories when you first met. So please, Diana Crow, please take it away.
Oh, that's such a magic song from Dinocrow, though, were, or when. And I think all these songs today are going to be all kind of r romantic songs. <laughs> so they really make me chill out. These are my favourites just to chill down to. And as we are fast appro approaching Christmas, I can't wait for a December issue of Broadcast where I can do some Christmas songs for you all. But um, hey, we've still got um, another week, haven't we, of Broadcast next week. So we'll bring you another eclectic collection of music. But um, yeah, I hope you're enjoying the music and um, please leave in the comments of the podcast or on, on if you know what your favourite jazz songs are. Maybe because uh, I'm giving you quite a few here. If you give me your top three songs and I've not heard any, I'd love to discover some more great romantic jazz songs to add to my collection. So anyway, let's rock and roll to Weather Machine. Now, if you like the crunchy board games that are kind of complex, that are games with deep strategy that you go away thinking about what you would do next time in the game. You play the game like 10 times and you learn all different kind of strategies that are going on the board. There's only really one man that gives this complexity and it's Vitel Lacerda who's from Portugal and he is an absolute genius and interesting with the weather machine Kickstarter. You can $1 pledge it and pre, like pre-order a Kickstarter edition of his other games and if you've played one Vitel Lacerda game um, you'll probably want to collect other ones and interestingly when I did the video um, if you go to my YouTube channel and click community you'll notice that there are polls that I'm asking my viewers to go to and I was asking my viewers which Vit Vitel Lacerda games are their favorite so you can maybe go to that and maybe vote on it or um, the list at the minute, the top one. Um, let me just go to it actually to get the live count on that. Dun, 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 dun. Um, so yeah, his last big Kickstarter he did um, Kanban EV, which was the modernized version of the original Kanban. Second, it is on Mars. They're the two big favorites of people actually that um, come to my channel. So really really good anyway what's weather machine all about well you're a scientist who's working on a team because you've got a lead scientist who's made this machine to actually fix the weather of the earth because of maybe climate change and as you change the weather say for the united states it breaks the weather maybe in europe so you're the scientists that are trying to come up with inventions then to try and fix europe and when you fix europe there's then a problem in australia australasia so you you've got this kind of whack-a-mole as you're doing things each scientist is working competitively though and you're building your own workshop in your own like little factory and you're getting resources from the map and um you're getting you know you're going to governments to get loans or um grants basically to earn money and you're researching papers to get new machines you're making those machines and you're, you're doing these experiments to think there's like loads of cogs and wheels and things to push around and it's like super super complex but it's beautifully complex wonderful in in its design and uh, Vitel um, Lacerda himself has actually been working on this for a solid three years and it's a little bit of a parody on the aspect of climate change where he's having a little bit of fun um, with humans trying to fix climate change because he's a he he doesn't believe in climate um, that humans are changing the climate and I'm actually in the same boat as him as 1970 scientists called it global cooling they then changed the name in 1989 to global warming and then they changed the name in the noughties to climate change they just kept changing the name because people weren't believing in the name um, as things were getting hotter, they were getting colder, blah, blah, blah. And so, yeah, science, science is just lying on this. They don't just will not accept that they're wrong with the climate. But um, anyway, going off on a tangent there, that's Weather Machine. It's so good. I'm definitely going to get this as part of my birthday slash Christmas because my birthday is close to Christmas on the 22nd of December. And I'll also get the next game, which I'll talk about, which is the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, the adventure game, which I'll talk about after this next song. So what we've got lined up for you, we're going back to Pink Martini. This is just a beautiful song, really gets me in a good mood. It's called Clementine. It's just pure beautiful, the music and the singing. I absolutely love it. So sit back, relax, and here is Pink Martini again. 
Now, Clementine, the I love that song, really love it. Clementine and the Never Stop Falling In Love, they're from the LP of Pink Martini, which is called um, Hang On Little Tomato. Really fantastic album, front to back, actually. I love it, highly recommend that album. So, so cool. Now then, ooh. And I just want to mention the Dino Crawl were or when that we heard. That one is from 1933, I think, from actually a TV uh TV series, it was the opening music to the TV series and uh, got adapted over, which is super, super cool. I'm trying to give you some information about these songs because there's lots of history about them. And the next song I play, this, I'll give you some real interesting, awesome story about the next song. But anyway, let's go to the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim the Adventure Game. Oh, I, you know, before this Kickstarter launched, they were doing like previews of how it was going to look and they just really left me with so much disappointment and um, but when i came back after my holiday the the game phone site had been running for a good almost two weeks so when i came to it it was fully fledged out with updated graphics and updated information lots of stretch goals busted through and oh my goodness man it blew me away absolutely incredible i love the competitive nature of the adventure i love that everything there's high interaction between the players. I really love that. And um, I like the campaign, how it's set up. I, I love the expansion Dawn Gate, which in introduces vampires and the Dawn Gate faction, which should introduce some kind of PvP as the Dawn Gate are trying to kill the vampires and the vampires are trying to assassinate the Dawn Gate. So it will introduce the PvP aspect of that, which is very interesting. But um, as the storyline develops in that, it will kind of blend where you'll have to team up to take down the big baddie. So that all sounds wonderful. Not only that though, but in, in the game, Skyrim, you're basically picking a class and you're rolling your character any way, you're, any way you want. Do you want them to use magic staves? Do you want them to use weapons or range weapons? Do you want them to become legendary lockpicks or... Um, looking, um, detecting traps and all this stuff, which is going to help you when you go into dungeons and um, all the amazing tombs you can go in. It's like a fascinating, fascinating game. And do you know what? Everything about it is so wonderful. The Kickstarter, well, the, the Game Found exclusives as well, are adding legendary encounters and legendary items that you can get with like holographic cards and um, and metallic cards these are going to be very unique so it really is the time to jump on it you can also get a miniature pack which is wonderful because the mini the miniature monsters actually roam around the world and they can even attack the towns and close the towns down basically because they're so damaged so you, that you stop you getting quests or handing in quests in certain dungeons so that the world will be affected if everyone's being lazy and not attacking these enemies also, there is an all-in mode where you can all forget the storyline, but just go and do all the open world stuff because there's tons and tons of content and events that are happening. And um, there's an eight-player version of that, the, the <laughs> which is bonkers. I think there's going to be a playthrough on the game fan page um, where they play eight-player on Tabletop Simulator. I really want to see how crazy that is and the time between... Um, turns on an eight player because it, it it sounds like it's a headbanger but um it does sound really fun and i th i don't i'm not going to be able to stop myself from getting the eight player expansion um if, <laughs> if you're backing um elder scrolls i'm really interested what your thoughts are on the uh, on that but um it's super super curious the, the one thing I, I named the video actually the splash screen werewolves question mark because where are they if you can turn you if you can turn yourself into a, a vampire why can you not turn yourself into a werewolf it's, it's part of the skyrim experience and i'm really hoping there's a surprise coming down the pipe on the game fan page where they announce it they are approaching one million dollars is it in pounds one million pounds which whatever it is um, so maybe it will be a reveal, but uh, they should be putting it in. They definitely should be putting it in. And um, the Dawn Gate introduces a night and day cycle to the game as well. I love that aspect. It reminds me of Talisman. Um, when you bring in the, the werewolf also into Talisman. So, you know, oh, it's just so, so cool. I, I really, really 
love everything about it and um, I'm, I've been so surprised it's not me for six and I'm all over it and this is going to be probably the best gift I've bought myself for my birthday in maybe 10 years it, it really is if I get Weather Machine and Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim the adventure game what a name it is but what a game what a game and because Skyrim is a video game um, you've got loads of official soundtracks that you can play when you're playing it which will add to the theme and um, on the long form video that I did I actually put the um, the special edition that there was 10 years anniversary of the game on the 11 of the 11 2021 and they did a special symph symphony orchestra to some of the songs and um, if you watch my video I'll, I'm playing all that from the live broadcast that happened um, just over a week ago. All right, so that's three amazing games. Uh, Resurgence, a amazing engine building work placement, fantastic. Weather Machine, a superb crunchy um, work placement. And it's Weather Machine as well, you've really got to think turns ahead on that. <laughs> It's really a good thinking game. And the Elder Scrolls, just an amazing adventure game, open world game or campaign game, up to eight players. L looks absolutely incredible. I can't wait. These are just coming back after my holiday. These big three monster, big, whopping, amazing Kickstarters. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we are getting blessed again on Kick Kickstarter and Game Phone with just some epic, epic choice. Now, da -da -da. next I'll be talking about Arcane, the um, animated series, because you need to know about this, because, oh my god, this is spectacular. It's like a nuclear bomb in the world of animation. It has raised the bar of what's acceptable for me when it comes to animation. I'll talk more about that after this next song, but if there's one... My favourite, favourite of all jazz songs, it is this next song. And this song has a lot of history. Um, it's called You're My Thrill. It's from 1933. And it only gets sung by women. It gets sung and recorded Almost every 10 years, a new artist picks it up. And there's been over maybe 25 artists that have covered this song. It's, it's, it's probably the song that's been covered more than any other song. It's that good. But the song is really about when you meet the person you fall in love with. And when you're not with them, you're just can't stop thinking about them. And it just absolutely takes over your day thinking about them it just i don't know rocks your world and all you think you think about is this other person it is so so good there has been some modern versions of it but in 2009 dinah kroll did a version of it and she is simply the best version of all of them that i have heard simply because she can get very very low with her singing almost bass down for a lady and she nails the emotion from this song it just hits me every time I hear it on the heart it's so touching and wow it, it's just so good so I'm gonna shut up and <laughs> play this from Dinah Kroll it is um, this version again is from the live in Rio um, and it's totally spectacular so here we go Prepare yourself for this wonderful, wonderful jazz song.
Wow, 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 that's my favorite jazz song in the world by the singer that I love. Please let me know your favorites in the comments of the podcast or the YouTube channel. Um, you're not getting the music on YouTube, are you? But um, <laughs> I guess on the podcast, leave a comment of your favorite jazz song. Um, all right, let's talk about Arcane then. It's by Riot Games. This is an animation on Netflix. And it's a labor of love. It looks so good. So many camera angles, depth of field going on, wonderful facial animations and character animations, physical world where they're actually bouncing around and you can see things bending and dust flying up. They've done such a stellar job on making the world feel kind of immersive. And um, it's sp sped into three acts. Each act is three episodes and then the timeline increases so in in the first act all the characters will age into act two i believe they'll also age into act three as it really is a pre-story of the league of legends interestingly in board gaming though riot games brought out mechs and minions into the retail space in board games and it was like a hundred dollars and it blew everybody away because the quality was above anything people expected and it really helped Kickstarter with this upgrading quality because the, it kind of raised the bar. And since then on Kickstarter and now Game Firm, we're getting games with superior quality than what's ever been seen in the retail space. And I hope Arcane does the same where Disney and Pixar look at this and go, this is how we need to do animation going forward. And, and really with all this Marvel... <sighs> drill through. it's like there's so much marble boring stuff because kind of repeating uh, marvel heroes they're doing the same cliched things that the hero does it's so refreshing to see arcane with all these a vast array of characters all fascinating wonderful and um, it is really really good now i'm recording this on before act three comes out this weekend so if you're watching this on the listening to this on the Sunday you should be able to get act three also um, it, it's so good I um, I was glued to it I, I, I binge watched one to six and I can't wait to see act three it should be out um, soon for me to watch it and um, I can't recommend it enough it, it's just fantastic the best animated thing I've ever ever seen and to say put it up there just showed you how, how outstanding it really is and i think you deserve yourself to watch it i think the first episode is almost the pilot i i think you've got to at least watch episode two to really get to see how the animation will go further on because the first one is a bit you can see the experimental nature of the first one when it comes to the second one it kind of gets more impressive and as you go through it the world building and the story gets deeper Th more threads are happening surprises plots thickening and all surprises are happening and it's just really really entertaining piece of magic from riot games hints of a second season of it and i'm totally up for that and if it goes to the cinema i'm totally going to that because i'm hooked i'm hooked on arcane it's such fantastic stuff i really really love it cannot recommend it highly high 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 standards wow 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 all right peeps um i'm going to come back for one last segment i'm going to be talking about the movies i watch which was june the new james bond finch and red notice they're all worth watching but i'm I going to try and give you my thoughts in 60 seconds for each one of them just to tell you which one of those i uh think you you know well, we just gave you my thoughts on them because they're all worth watching. All right, what have we got next then? Well, I'm going back to Pink Martini. And um, this is an interesting one indeed. The song, Lily. good karaoke song actually that um if you got uh, anyone who likes karaoke floats from that song they might want to sing it. it's got a very very good power and kind of you know gusto with that one anyway 
time for our little movie section at the end here. And um, June, we'll talk about June first. Wow. Um, I have read the book, actually. I played, I bought the computer game back in the 90s and it came with a free book of June. So <laughs> I actually picked the copy up for free. Was blown away by the uh, sci-fi nature of it. W actually took my friend to the cinema who's a massive Star Wars mega fan, didn't know anything about June, and it blew him away. The spaceship design, the world building, the slow pace, everything's fantastic. I really was sat back in the cinema seat like I've not sat back before, just taking in this amazing scene because it was a labour of love from the director. It just blew me away. Can't wait for the sequel. There's actually going to be part of a trilogy as well, so it's a very, very exciting franchise. And um, yeah, so good. And I love the fact that they, um, the, they, there's like the character development of um, is, is really rich as well, which is really nice. And it doesn't really try to centre too much on all the other factions going on. It's, it's more character building on the Atreides family, which is nice, appreciated, and really, really good. Let's go to James Bond. Um, I did enjoy the movie. I'm glad it's Daniel Craig's final movie. I'm kind of um, want to see a new James Bond now in, a, in this new generation. And um, I think it was a fitting end to his service as um, 007. And um, yeah, it was an interesting story. Didn't really like the baddie at the end too much. It was a little bit of, I don't know. It was, not my as when it comes to bond villains he's like one of the worst ones for me but um overall i did kind of enjoy it and the ending was um interestingly even today no spoilers of what happens at the end of the film but it's definitely worth a watch james bond let's go on to finch now this is a tom hanks movie that should have gone to the cinema but because of covid happened and apple tv got the rights of it so you're going to need apple tv to watch it unless you go on the torrent sites and download the thing as it's rampant all these movies are rampant on torrents aren't they finch it's wonderful tom hanks in a post-apocalyptic film with him and his dog and um, creates a robot to look after his dog in the case of him dying. It is beautiful. Love the world building. Love Tom Hanks' character. Lo and I don't agree it's Tom Hanks playing Tom Hanks at all. I think Tom Hanks is playing a guy who is like an engineer who's lonely, loves his dog. You know, he's just because he sounds like Tom Hanks. I hate those comments about Tom Hanks just playing himself in all these movies. I thought in Finch it was fantastic. The robot design of the robot he makes though is really really cool. I love the relationship with the robot and him because it's like an advanced AI and um, it turns into like a little bit of a road trip and it has lots of little surprises. It's genuinely funny, got me laughing and I highly recommend Finch. I think June and Finch have gone into my top 10 of the year, they're that good. Finch really had an impact on me. Post-apocalypse is my favorite genre par se, I wanna say, in video games and board games, and there's not that many in the movie world, and I really appreciated the space that Finch is in, because um, I love robots as well, hey. Um, Red Notice, um, this is on Netflix, no? Really, really good. It's The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, Gal Gadot, and Ryan John... Ryan some... I always forget that guy's name. That guy. The comedian guy. <laughs> uh, really, really good film. I actually thought it was good fun. I like The Rock, who's like the muscle guy. And... Um, Ryan Reynolds, is that his name? He's like a really good stealth guy. I love Gal Gadot in here as well. I, I love the Interpol lady as well. I can't remember her name. She's like an upcoming British actress. I think she's great though in everything that I see. I like to see her start as a, um, a star in her own thing, but that's to be seen. But um, yeah, I think it's really good and it could start a new franchise and I'd definitely be looking forward if there was a Red Notice too. Definitely a blast to watch that. I think it's going to creep into my number 11 spot of the best films of the year because it was just really, really exciting and a good relationship with Ryan Reynolds and The Rock. So 
yeah, I'd like to see them working together in a film with Gal Gadot. Absolutely. It was kind of fun. And I miss the kind of um, films where there's thieves and stuff. And I think the three of them working in a movie, another movie, with the, again, the Interpol lady chasing after them. It's kind of interesting, comical and fun. And it really is like a popcorn at home, sit down and just watch this movie. You don't really need to think about it. And it's kind of funny and... Um, yeah, super, super cool. So all these four films that I've watched in the last four weeks have really hit the nose on the head. It's June, amazing. James Bond, really, really good. Finch, blew me out of the water, also really good. Red Notice, what a slam dunk. That was amazing. So there we go, peeps. Oh, we're almost at the end of broadcast number three. We are going to leave you with another Diana Kroll song. And um, it's one of her... I guess well-known songs, The Look of Love. This has over two and a half million views on YouTube. This one is live from 2017 and um, on the Vivo channel. Really, really amazing song and cements Diana Krall as my all-time favorite singer. That's female and Pink Martini in my number two. So awesome sauce that is. So let me wrap up broadcast because when I put this final song on, it, that will end today's show. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, please check out my, if you're on the podcast, please check out my YouTube channel, which is Kickstarter Radio 102.4. The, the you can get all these in the description below, links to my YouTube channel. And um, we, we, we are covering all the best little gems example resurgence is a little gem that you need to know about all the big triple a games like the elder scrolls 5 skyrim game we make sure that none go off your radar unless my wife puts me on a four week holiday surprise i think after 20 months of lockdown i think we needed a holiday and it was a good break to get away from the politics of board game especially after the disaster of Gen Con. I completely went past Essen. I tried looking for some Essen news, but it was like a snore fest. Ah, the best stuff's on Kickstarter and GameFound, isn't it? <laughs> That's the bottom line, and it's good times to be covering it. I do it out of love and passion, peeps, and I love the broadcast show because I can share with you my music that I love, um, that I've loved throughout my life. So yeah, happy days. Please leave comments. What's your favourite jazz songs down below? I really would be interested in learning what they are. And think about um, subscribing to the podcast as well. Helps with the numbers and all that good stuff. So here we are. Um, I'm going to say thank you for listening to broadcast. This has been Kickstarter Radio 102.4. I'm the host, Lipstick Paddy, based in Mexico. Oh, yeah. I'm from Ireland, of course. I'm an Irish alien here in Mexico. Living it up, happy times, hot, 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 always here, even as it's winter, but hey, all that good stuff. So yeah, thank you so much for listening. Let me put on the final song then, this is Diana Crow, The Luck of Love. Oh, and bye-bye from me. <laughs>